Good morning. Hey everyone, it's Catherine. Just getting set up a couple minutes until we get started with our 10 a.m. exercise class, our AWI Functional Fitness Workout. Today is Wednesday. We're going to do our Wednesday weight workout. So if you saw the uh, post Samantha made on Facebook, we can use weights or whatever weight substitute you have. So get creative. Grab some water, maybe grab a towel. And we'll start in about one minute. So I hope everyone's been having a good week. Staying cool. Today is supposed to be a hot one, so maybe stay indoors a little bit more. Hey, Eddie, good morning. Good morning, good morning, yes. <clears throat> so just under a minute and we will get started. Uh, again, my name is Catherine. Our functional fitness workout this morning, we're gonna focus on weight. So get creative, grab your canned goods, your bottles of wine, um, if you have a kettlebell, dumbbells, um, all of that, just have it handy. We can incorporate it. And of course, we're gonna start uh, like we normally do, just kind of easing into it, the little warm up. And I know some of you have already been out and about this morning while well, it has been cooler which is excellent but we're going to practice in the warm-up movements we're going to do a little bit later in the workout so we'll go through the range of motion um, movement first and you can do these seated if you rather um, otherwise we're going to come standing and just start to roll the shoulders up back and down so big shoulder rolls exaggerate the shoulders rolling back and sliding down as if you were going to slide them into your back pocket. So up, back, and down. Nice full breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. And then let's start to crisscross the arms. So a nice dynamic stretch for the chest and also the back. And then next we'll take windmill arms. So begin to back stroke one and then the other. So even if you're seated, whether you're on a sturdy chair, a stability ball, or the front edge of your couch, you wanna reach back, go ahead and let the shoulder turn out as much as you need to. So keep that back stroking going. Hey there, Trudy, thanks for joining us. It's a big windmilling arms back. All right, next up we're gonna do some air squats or sit to stand. So the air squat, you're gonna bend the legs, push your hips back as if you were sitting into a chair, or the sit to stand, going over to the front edge of your couch, sitting down, coming all the way up, push the hips back and down. So just a few more, you choose either the air squat or the sit to stand. Hands wherever you need them. Last one, good. Shoulders back, we're gonna take our fingertips behind the ears, so your thumbs are down towards your shoulders. You're gonna close the elbows straight ahead in front of you, and then you're gonna push the elbows back. So elbows are gonna point straight in front, and then push the elbows back behind you. So close and open. One more. Good, and then release the arms, roll it out. We're gonna take a hinge Hands can rest to your hips, or maybe you have a dowel nearby that you want to place on your back. So the hinge, you want to push your hips back and then press your head back, as if you're pushing your head back into that imaginary dowel. Check the belly muscles. We want them pulled in and up towards the spine. One more. Good. And then we're going to alternate a knee lift with an arm curl. So imagine you were holding weights in your hands. Good morning, Sherry, thanks for joining us. Imagine you were holding weights in your hand and then option to lift up the knee or maybe just the heel. And you could do this uh, seated if you rather. So we're just warming up, practicing movements we're gonna do in just a bit with added weight. One more, good. From here, widen your stance, turn your toes and your knees out a little bit. Hands can rest to your thighs or onto your hips and we're gonna do a wide stance sumo squat. Option to add an upright row with both hands pulling up 
or alternate one arm and then the other. Two more. Last one. From here, we're going to go right into the hinge. I'm going to take my toes a little more forward. Hold your imaginary weight. Push your hips back and then hips push forward. And we have such strength and power from that forward hip push. That's what causes the arms. And if we were holding a weight, a weight to float up. Two more. And last one. Nice job. Roll it out and march it out. Okay, left foot in front, right foot in back. Option to lift your back right heel. Shoulders back, you're gonna hinge forward. So you wanna have a flat back or a neutral spine as you reach your right arm forward and pull it towards your right hip. So we're just practicing our one arm bent over row. For more challenge, can you pick up your back right foot? One more. Good, and then let's try that on the other side. Right foot in front, left foot in back, shoulders back, left arm, you're gonna to pull towards the left hip and extend. Option to lift up your left foot and balance. Your standing right leg has a slight bend at the knee. Two more, and last one. All right, big shoulder rolls. Grab a sip of water. Nice job with those warm-up movements. Um, again, those were just kind of a preview of some of the movements we're gonna do in the workout with weights. So we're actually gonna start with the kettlebell or dumbbell or big wine bottle, whatever you have, swing. And the swing is a form of the hinge. Um, so you'll wanna use whatever weight you have handy. Of course, you could do this without any weight at all, and that would be fine. All right, so I'm gonna use a kettlebell and you wanna secure whatever weight you're using with both hands, take your feet wide, roll the shoulders back, lift the chest, push the hips back as if you were gonna hike the weight back through the legs and then push the hips forward. So the hinge with or without a weight, bend the legs as much as you need to Otherwise, imagine your tailbone, we're gonna to touch the wall behind you. <sighs> Depending on the weight that you are using, you might alternate a single arm swing. Maybe you're holding two dumbbells and you wanna alternate one arm and then the other. Squeeze everything you have in the back side of the body. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice, nice job. Go ahead and set that down. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Shake out the arms. Up next, we're gonna do an exercise for the upper body. So push-ups, whether you're doing these against the wall, the floor, anywhere in between, you could do these using a medicine ball or have your hands on a foam roller or your hands or your feet on a stability ball. Um, if you have a medicine ball, you can have it under both hands or you can alternate with the ball under one hand, come up and switch and switch. So whichever variation of a push-up that you can do safely and successfully is what we're gonna do. So you wanna keep the shoulders down and back, whether you're on your knees or your toes, bend the arms and extend the arms. Bend and extend. So keep going. Just for variety, let's say you were doing these on a stability ball, make sure it's anchored safely. Let's do a few more. Four, three, two, and one. Nice job, take a moment here, circle out the wrists, wiggle out the fingers, shake out the hands, roll out the shoulders. Up next, squat with an overhead press. So maybe you have a weighted backpack uh, that you can use, maybe you have a pair of dumbbells or canned goods, 
you want to rest up on your shoulders. So I'm going to use a weighted backpack. And so the movement, we did it in the warm-up, the air squat. Imagine you're sitting down onto a chair or the sit to stand. Actually take your tail, tap it to the chair or the couch with the overhead press. Let's see, what do I want to use for my overhead press? I'm going to use my sand filled water bottles. So you could do just the lower half, the squat, or just the upper half, the overhead press. Um, but when you're ready, push the hips back, stand, and extend the arms overhead. So if you just wanted to do the overhead press, that's fine. If you just want to do the squat or sit to stand, that's fine. Check in with your posture. Check in with your feet. Are they grounded through the ball of the big toe, the ball of the little toe, and the heel? Four more. Three. Two. And last one. All right, safely release the weights. Roll it out. Up next, we're going to do a one arm bent over row. Now, you could do this seated, and I like to stagger my feet, rest one hand, and with the other hand, you're going to pull towards the hip. Even if you're doing this without weight, it's a great movement to practice. Otherwise, grab a weight or a weight substitute, and you can do this standing. Again, I like to stagger my feet just gives me a better uh, foundation. So I'm going to start with my right arm, shoulders are down and back, belly muscles are zipped up, and you want to pull the weight up and back toward the hip. Exhale on the exertion, on the harder part of the movement. How about two more? Nice job. Take your time, roll it out. We're gonna to switch to the other side. So again, seated or standing, you want a neutral spine, meaning we're not overarching, nor are we rounding the back. Belly muscles zip up. Can you keep your ears in the same line as your shoulders as you start to row? You wanna draw the weight up and back towards your hip socket not so much towards your shoulder socket. Three more. Three, two, and last one. Nice job. Set it down. So I'm borrowing my husband's kettlebell, 30 pounds. Um, so I did not need to do a whole lot of reps to really feel it. Grab some water. If you're still with me, give me a wave or a thumbs up. And just a quick reminder, we had some questions about the small group training that we offer for AWI members. So that is Tuesday and Thursday afternoon from 3 to 3.30 via Zoom. And again, that's a small group fitness training that I lead with other fellow um, AWI members. Great, thank you for the feedback. So if you're interested, you can reach out to me or Samantha, and we'll get you the login information to join via Zoom. It's actually pretty user-friendly. If you have any issues, we can kind of practice and get you set up. All right, what is up next? All right, bicep curl with a, we a weight or a band. I'm gonna do a combo just for variety. And so you may have done this combo before. Uh, what you're gonna do is hold a band, one end of the band and one hand if you wanna combine, and start to curl. Now if you have a weight that you wanna add to your band, so I know some of you have this equipment at home, this is one way to combine it safely for a bicep curl. Otherwise, grab whatever weight you want to curl and begin. Now as you do this, can you keep your elbow tucked close to your side, 
You could do this seated on a stability ball. That's going to be a little bit more challenge for your core. See if you can keep your chest lifted and your shoulders level. So what we do not want to do is let the shoulders slope off to one side. For more challenge, you could pick up your other foot or maybe just the heel. How about three more? Two. And last one and release it. Let's try that on the other side. Again, if you don't have that equipment, grab a can of soup or a bottle of wine, don't drop it, and start to curl. I'm going to do that same movement holding one end of a resistance tube or resistance band and a light to moderate weight. Where you stand on the tubing makes a difference as far as the resistance that you'll be feeling when you curl. Elbow is tucked pretty close to the body and what we are not doing is moving the arm forward and back. So we're keeping the upper arms glued to the side of the torso. Whether you're seated or standing, you've got great posture. You might lift up the other heel or foot if you want more challenge to your balance. And bone density. Woo, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Release it, shake it out. Let's do a quick stretch for the arms. <clears throat> So you want to take your arms in front, thumbs up, palms facing one another, and open the arms wide, and then come back in. Do that again. Okay, thank you Eddie for letting me know. I know for some of us we have a set schedule, um, and the afternoon may not be a good fit for us right now. Totally understandable, no worries at all. Uh, one more, open and close. Good, roll it out. Up next, we're going to do a side raise for the shoulders. I'm going to use canned garbanzo beans. These are about one pound each. Option one is you're going to lift one arm to the side, no higher than shoulder height, and then the other arm to the side. Option two, both arms lift. Now, as you continue this, you want to make sure your wrist is flat is not rounding forward or backwards. Uh, seated or standing. If you want to add a little more, alternate either a step back or, if you prefer, alternate a step forward. Another variation for the arm position, you could put more bend to your arms, so you lift up to the side with more of a bent arm. How about five more? Five, four, three, two, and last one. Nice job. Go ahead and set the weights down. Roll it out. We are going to do a second set of the swing or the hinge. So the hinge, you're going to push your hips back as if your tail were going to touch the wall behind you and then rise tall. You might rest weights on your shoulders or across the meaty part of your upper back and make this a good morning. If you want to have a weight on the ground that you're going to pull up and then hinge forward when the weight is in front of you, this becomes more of a deadlift. You could use a medicine ball, you could use a heavy container of laundry detergent. Otherwise, if you like the more dynamic hinge, we did it earlier, with or without weight, is the swing. Hips push back and hips push forward. So you choose some variation of the hinge, whether the weight is in front for the deadlift, the weight is on the shoulders or the upper back for the good morning, or a wide stance swing with or without weight. Squeeze everything you got in the back side of the body. Four, three, two, and one. Nice job, set that down, 
shake it out. Go ahead and grab a sip of water. Let's do a quick check-in with our uh, level of exertion, our perceived level of intensity. So depending on the weight that you're working with today, depending on how you're feeling, any injuries, how you slept, all of those things will have some impact on how much exertion you're putting out. So if you were to think about that one to 10 scale, one is sitting on the couch watching TV, 10 is you're working so hard it feels like you're about to pass out. Great, thank you, Joe. I would say I'm about there as well. So if you're using a heavier weight, you'll notice the heart and the lungs have to work harder because they're getting uh, more oxygenated blood to the larger working muscles. Great, good. Excellent job. Our next movement, we're going to come onto our back or recline on the couch or on some propped up pillows. And we're going to do a pull over. So to pull over, um, you could do this on a stability ball. You're going to take a weight a moderate weight or a heavy weight, hold it in both hands. You're going to extend it overhead and then pull it over the chest. Overhead and pull. You could do this with two lighter weights, one in each hand. Glue the weights together, take it overhead and pull. So you choose the weight you want to work with and you choose where you want to practice the pullover. And again, I'm kind of hopping around to different uh, tools, pieces of equipment, just so we have some variety. Some folks have more weight, uh, traditional weight equipment at home than others. If you're using the stability ball, you want your head and shoulders fully supported. Whatever weight you're holding, you're going to extend it overhead and then pull over the chest and pause. Now when you take the weight overhead, you want to stop before you can't bring the weight back up. So it's a very flexible position for the shoulder, but if you go too far, we might lose the sensation of strength to flexibility. <sighs> Inhale, reach up and overhead. Exhale, pull, pause over the chest. Resist the urge to go past uh, that chest point. Three more, two more. <sighs> And last one, the next time the weight comes over your chest, option one, keep your arms parallel as you bend, bringing the weight or weights to your chest and extend. So it's a narrow chest press. Option two, keep the weight extended, keep your elbow on top of your shoulder, bend the arm so the weight moves towards your head, and then extend the arm. Bend and extend. Keep going. So one option is the narrow chest press. The other option is the tricep extension, also known as the lying French press, or in the weight room, it's called a skull crusher. We do not want to crush the skull, so you want to hover the weight above the head or the forehead and then straighten the arms so the upper arm is still the lower arm moves remember the other option was just uh, palms facing inward a narrow press three more two more and last one all right set the weights down take your time transitioning to your side or sitting up Grab a sip of water. Oh boy, thank you. And let me check my notes here. We are flying by. Okay, our next movement, we're gonna do the single leg squat, also known as a pistol squat. And so to do this, I'm gonna use the front edge of the couch you can do the same. You can use a sturdy chair. For this movement, you do not want to use a stability ball. You would not want to use a chair that rolls. All right, so you want something sturdy, 
underneath you. And let's do a couple without any additional weight. So what you're going to do is sit on the front edge, check your posture, pick up one heel. I'm going to pick up my right heel and then see if you can do this without using your hands, come up to standing. Now when you sit, go ahead and pick up the entire foot, push the hips back and down and switch. Lift up the other heel, stand, pick up the entire foot and sit. That would be option one, alternating sides. Option two, can you pick up the entire foot as you stand, keep the foot lifted as you sit and switch. Now, if you wanted to make this harder, go ahead and put on a weighted backpack or bring weights up towards your shoulders. I'm gonna keep my hands free just because it helps with my balance. So let's continue our single leg uh, sit to stand, also known as a pistol squat. And notice the difference with one leg doing the work versus the other leg. Can you keep the chest lifted as opposed to collapsed? If you're using the foot to push down for assistance, that's fine. Maybe it's just the tiptoes. And sit. Let's do a few more. Let's do two more. One for each side. Best you can, you want to sit with control like you were sitting onto a pane of glass. And sit with control. Nice, nice job. All right, good, a new move. We're learning some new moves. Um, on that last exercise, the single leg squat or pistol squat, could you tell a difference with one leg doing the work and then between the other leg doing the work? Hey there, Samantha, thanks for joining us. So just think back, could you tell a difference? Was it easier or harder for one side or the other? I definitely can tell a difference. And so what we're gonna do is five more repetitions on the side that needs more strengthening, right? So the side that felt maybe a little bit less strong or a little bit less stable, we're gonna go back and do five more on that side. So for me, it's with my right foot down. So my right leg is doing the work and my left leg lifted. You give that one a 12. Okay, so the right leg, Eddie, for you, felt a little stronger. So for, for you and for others, if your right leg felt stronger, you're gonna do these next five with your left leg as the working leg. Okay, a modification, let's say your knees and hips um, have had enough of that movement, please do something else in place. So maybe just a traditional sit to stand with both legs. Otherwise, take a moment to catch your breath. So five repetitions. <coughs> when you're ready, I'm gonna do it with my right foot down, stand, sit with control, and go again. So before we were alternating sides, one leg got a rest. This time we're doing five in a row, back to back, sit with control. How about two more? Woo. And last one. And then all the way down. Nice, nice job, good work. Grab some water, a couple more movements, and then we will um, stretch it out and y'all will, will be good to go for the rest of your Wednesday hump day. So let's do an alternating single leg hinge. It'll be a nice follow up to the single leg squat. <clears throat> We've done a few hinges already. We're gonna add the tricep kickback if you want it. So the movement, thumbs are gonna come up to your shoulders, palms are gonna face inward. Roll the shoulders back. You're gonna hinge forward, either tap one foot back or lift one leg back and then come up and then you would alternate. Another option would be to extend one or both arms back and then return to center. So I'm gonna grab hand weights, shoulders roll back. Imagine on your back you've got a dowel. Head between your shoulder blades and your tailbone are keeping contact with the dowel. So hinge, 
Option to extend and then come back up. Other leg, hinge, extend, and come back up. I'm a little wobbly. So palms are gonna face inward. See if you can slow this down and really squeeze your standing leg and the back of your upper arms. Last little variation if you want. Instead of taking your arms straight back and your palms inward, what you're gonna do is rotate the palms in and up towards the sky before coming back. So it's a rotating kick back and then back to the center. Good, let's do a few more. Squeeze the back of the upper arm. Belly muscles zip in. How about your shoulders? Are they down and back? Woo, last one. All right, set those down. Roll it out. Let the arms swing. And we're gonna come down onto our back. So hopefully you are able to come down, take your time. There's no rush coming down onto your back. And we want to use padding unless you're on carpet. So maybe grab a towel or a throw pillow. Maybe you've got a mat. Roll it out. If you have um, difficulty resting your head flat <clears throat> onto the floor or the mat, go ahead and roll up a little towel or tuck a throw pillow underneath it. Over time, the tightness in the neck and chest will begin to loosen to where you can rest your head back onto the floor. And we're going to do the half get up. So the half get up is a great movement for the core strength and the shoulder stability. So the movement, <clears throat> I think we've done it before, most of us have. Let's start with the left leg bent and the right leg straight. Take your right arm, push it down to the floor, and with your left arm, reach up to the sky, and you want to sit up, curl up, press up, and then come right back down. So let's have this be option one, extend. Now you choose how high to come up. Exhale, and inhale. More challenge, option two, take a light to moderate weight and hold it in your left hand as you push up to the sky. So you could hold a dumbbell, you could hold a can of soup, you can hold a kettlebell. For more challenge, you can hold it with the bottom down and the top up. How about one more? And then all the way down. All we're going to do is flip-flop. Bend your right leg, straighten your left leg. Take a weight to your right hand and extend the right arm. Your left hand pushes down to the left side. You're going to start to curl up, sit up, now notice you can roll onto your left arm as much as you need to. For more challenge, can you come all the way up? See if you can keep the arm extended up by the ear. Three more. Two. And last one, and rest. Just take a moment there on your back. And my apologies, I didn't give you an alternative movement. So if you aren't uh, comfortable coming onto your back or doing that exercise, a great core strengthener would be the plank. And the plank can be done with straight arms or bent arms, using the wall, the floor, or anywhere in between. You can do that on your toes or your knees. So, coming, or staying onto your back, just set the weight off to the side. Shift the bent leg side to side, fingertips behind the ears, and we're gonna curl ourselves up, take elbow to opposite knee, and set it down. Elbow to opposite knee, and set it down. You could do this seated, or even standing. So this is a bicycle variation. Option two, start with your legs lifted. Come up, and just keep the knees where they are. Option three, extend one leg while the elbow points to the opposite knee. Option four, I think, legs extend, 
Hopefully I haven't lost count. You're going to cross, cross, cross. Pull the belly muscles in. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Take a full body stretch. Reach arms overhead. Take your legs long below. And then fold one leg in. Give it a little hug, either on the shin bone or the back of the thigh. Let's be careful not to pull onto the kneecap. And be careful not to pull directly behind the knee joint. And then full body stretch. Let's do that on the other side. So you're going to hug the other leg in, hands to shin or back of the thigh. Just give it a little squeeze. And set one foot down, cross the uh, opposite ankle over the knee. Again, even if you're seated, you can do this. For more stretch, pick up your bottom foot, use your hands to take hold onto the back of the thigh. You could also use your pant leg material or grab a towel, loop it back there. And then release and switch. Crossover for more stretch. Pick up your bottom foot, reach behind the thigh. If you can take hold. And then release. Take your time rolling to one side pressing yourself up to a comfortable seated or kneeling or standing position with some big shoulder rolls up back and down. And we're going to take one arm up, pat yourself on the back using the other hand gently press back, pull back or reach back. And we're going to lean to the side. I like to lean to the opposite side of the arm that's up, if that makes sense. It's not wrong to do it the other way, I just feel more stretched this way. Come up and switch, other arm up, pat yourself on the back, choose if you need some assistance, push back, pull back, or reach back, and then option to lean away. And then release, roll the shoulders. Let's come to standing, or if you're more comfortable, you can do the seated. Extend one leg. I'm going to do the right leg. Dig the heel in, push the hips back, lift the chest. So imagine that dowel on your back, a standing uh, hamstring stretch or hip flexion. And then come up and switch. Just flip flop back foot with front foot. So your front foot is flexed. You want to dig the heel in, push the hips back. So your back leg is your standing um, supported leg. It does have a bend at the knee. And then let's come up, take a big calf stretch. Step one foot back, push the heel down. See if you can take a peek at your back toes. Can you get them going the same direction as your front toes? Roll the shoulders back. And then either turn your body to face the other way or just flip flop your feet. Back heel pushes down. Your feet are about hip bone width. And if you look to your back toes and you see that they're turned out, uh, see if you can wrangle them forward so they're going the same direction as your front toes. And release. Nice, nice job. Great work, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, so the movements we practiced today, very functional movements. See if you can think about these movements as you go throughout your day. So for example, earlier I was doing some laundry um, and I was thinking about that movement. So when you move the clothes from the washing machine to the dryer, depending on the type of um, washer and dryer you have, how is your form? So if you're coming from up here and putting it down here, are we keeping a nice neutral spine and a strong core, or are we doing one of these? Right, so we have a rounded spine, and then we add rotation, and that can be risky over time. So just think about that as you're doing your everyday activities. All right, have a great rest of your Wednesday. Um, I will see you guys next time. Again, my name is Catherine with the Aging and Wellness Institute. Don't uh, hesitate to reach out, contact us if we can be of any support. Good, all right, excellent. Thank you for that feedback, Sherry. I'm glad that some of these movements were new 
and helpful to identify maybe places we can work to improve our balance and strength and that's how we stay functional and safe and independent. So thank you for that feedback. Y'all have a great rest of the day. Bye.